Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley. Thanks for joining me today. In this month's edition of the Ellen Hudson In Touch newsletter, I thought I would bring back an oldie but a goodie coloring method, and that is the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And I thought I would give you a few tips for using these markers. Now in front of me here, I have the entire May 2018 Essentials by Ellen release, and it is so full of goodness, you need to check it out. And for today's project, I will be using the new Mondo Sakura, or Sakura, I'm not sure how you say it, but it's a big, beautiful flower. <laughs> and I'm going to be using it on my project today, and I gave you a little peek at the coordinating dies as well. Now, for all the projects that I created using this new May 2018 release, I use this color palette here. And doing, putting something like this together really helps me to kind of create a collection that's cohesive. And what I did down here was I found colors that coordinated well with the ink colors that I have above. So the ones above that are stamped out, those are ink pad colors. But those little swatches below are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers that I'll be using. And I'll be sure to link all of that over at the InTouch blog. So I'm going to start out by mounting my ginormous Mondo flower, and I'm not gonna say the name of it a whole lot because I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I'm stamping it in some Hero Arts Intense Black ink onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock. Now when I color with these Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, or even the Zig Art and Graphic Twins, and other types of dye base markers, I really like to use the Bristol Smooth cardstock. It's a little bit different in composition than the Nina Solar White that I like to use for the Copic markers. And I just find that these dye-based, water-based kind of markers move and blend a little bit better on this Bristol Smooth cardstock. It has kind of a different finish on the surface of the cardstock that allows those dye-based markers to kind of sit on top and just kind of be able to blend out more rather than the Nina Solar White that kind of absorbs the color and kind of locks it into place. Now, another alternative to the Bristol Smooth would be a watercolor cardstock. That's gonna give you a little bit more of a textured finish on the surface of the cardstock, but that also works great for these types of markers. So you can see I've started coloring my Mondo flower here and I started with a darker pink towards the center of the flower. I blended that out with a lighter pink and then I'm using an aqua brush or a water brush to kind of blend that out even more. And these markers are really easy to color with. You can see it doesn't take me a whole lot of going back and forth with the blending to get a really smooth blend. And I, I have these all in my stash, but I tend to forget that they are a very quick and easy coloring method. And you don't have to think a whole lot about color families. You just really need a light and a dark of a color or even just one color with an aqua brush or a water brush will make a beautiful watercolored look. Now, if you're going for a finish that's a little more solid, you may wanna skip the water brush or aqua pen there. You can definitely use that to give you a watercolored look, but if you want a more solid kind of Copic-like finish with that deep, rich color, you can skip the water and just blend out with a light and a dark marker. So I'm going in and I'm doing the same kind of technique with the leaves here. I have a light, I actually have three green markers here, but I'm only using a couple of them on each area. And I'm just taking and I'm going in with the darker color first and then blending out with the lighter color. And I'm also going to bring in kind of a tan color for some of those stems that are there because this is a cherry blossom type flower. That's what a sakura or a sakura is. I'm not, I, I just want to stop saying that altogether. <laughs> but um, they have that really branchy kind of base. Now there were a couple of areas that I wanted to darken up so I went back and did that and I did add a little bit of yellow to like the stamens of the flowers. So you can see I colored the other one as well but I didn't use quite as much of the dark that I did on the previous image. So I got a completely different look even though I used the exact same markers. And before I run them through my die cut machine, I just hit them with a heat tool to make sure I wasn't gonna smudge any of that water-based ink that I have on the surface of that cardstock. So now that I have my images all colored, they're ready to be die cut, I'm just taking the coordinating die and I'm placing that over the image and I'm holding it in place with a little bit of delicate surface painter's tape. 
So once I have that in place, I'll just run it through my Gemini Junior die cut machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that process with the other floral image that I colored as well. I'm only going to use one on today's project, but I did wanna show you, you can get various looks using the same markers. So when I colored these images, I just used the markers themselves and a water brush, but you could absolutely substitute a paintbrush in lieu of that water brush. You can use things like your um, tonic aqua shimmer pen or your wink of Stella shimmer pen to give this a shimmery finish, or you could try something like a pearlized water with some perfect pearls to give these a shiny finish as well. Because these are water-based, they really blend with a lot of different materials. And I even went back and blended a little bit of the areas with some of the Zig Art & Graphic Twin Blender Pen, which is a great method for blending these markers as well. So now that my images are die cut, I'm ready to start putting my card together. And I've started with a card base made of some Essentials by Ellen Linen cardstock. It's cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half to create a top folding note card. And I've just placed a little strip of this black and white washi tape. This washi tape is a part of the May bundle. I placed that right onto my card surface. I'm not gonna have a ton of layers on this card, but I think you're gonna find that it builds up really beautifully. And that little bit of texture on that white cardstock really adds something to a nice, clean and simple card. For my sentiment, I decided to use that beautiful scripty word that is a part of the coordinating die set. And I die cut it from some gold glitter cardstock as well as some Essentials by Ellen ebony black cardstock. And this ebony black cardstock already has some stick it adhesive on the back, so it's gonna make it easier to adhere to my project. And when I ran that through my die cut machine, I did use my metal shim in my Gemini Junior, and that gave me a nice clean cut with this intricate die. So I'm also using the little stamped image that says inside and out so that my complete sentiment's gonna read beautiful inside and out. And I stamped that onto a little banner piece that's cut from some Essentials by Ellen Oyster Gray cardstock. If you have not tried the new neutral cardstock from the Essentials by Ellen line, I am really loving them. They're very smooth, they're 100 pound, and they are like the perfect colors of black and grays. So I've gone ahead and put a little bit of liquid adhesive along the back of my sentiment and I stacked that gold die cut sentiment on top of the black one. And now I'm placing it onto the little banner that I stamped as well. And I'm going to add a little bit of foam adhesive along the back of this entire grouping so that I can add some dimension to this on my card. Now to adhere my beautiful flower grouping, I'm going to use some foam adhesive as well. So I guess this has a few more layers than I said originally, but <laughs> I can't help it. I like big cards and I cannot lie. Now you can see here, I'm actually blending out part of this flower using the Zig Art & Graphic Twin Colorless Blender, which I mentioned before. That works beautifully with these markers as well. Before I adhere my little flower, or my big flower, my Mondo flower, <laughs> Onto my card base, I did add a layer of vellum behind it. I just die cut that using the coordinating die as well and just kind of offset it. And that just helped give it a little bit of separation from the card front. And then I will go ahead and adhere that down and I'll remove the backer from my sentiment kind of grouping here and place it onto my card as well. And I did add a double layer of foam adhesive behind the right side of that sentiment grouping so that it would lay even as I kind of stretched it across the flower grouping and the card base itself since that flower is up on a little bit of foam adhesive. Now here I've brought in my little quickie glue pin. The Zig two-way glue pin works for this as well. And I've added a little bit of glue to the ends of those stamens and I've allowed that glue to dry. And now I'm bringing in some champagne deco foil and pressing that over that dried glue, which dries tacky. And that gave a little bit of foil accent to the stamens of these flowers and just really added that little bit of shine. And I finished off my glitter sentiment there with a layer of glossy accents. So here's a look at the completed card project and you can see the beautiful coloring results that I got using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. And I do tend to forget how quick and easy it really is to color with these markers. Now, as you can see here on the completed card project, I did sneak in a little bit of that gold foil dot washi. I just think that that really completed the card and tied in beautifully 
to the little foil accents that I added to the flower stamens. As always, I will have links to the featured supplies in the description at YouTube, but head on over to the Coordinating In Touch blog post because over there I'll have more still shots, more information, a complete list of supplies, as well as a few more tips and tricks for using these markers. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you won't miss any of our paper crafting and card making video tutorials. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Hey, if you've stuck around this long, you know you're my favorite. <laughs> to subscribe to our YouTube channel, go ahead and hit that button on the left side of the screen. And here's a couple more video tutorials I thought you might enjoy.